Sup everybody, back at it in the background as you can see. Uh, right quick, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, these two rivets. Both of these rivets have been set using the wet method of applying the goop. And you'll note that the right rivet has had a bunch of the goop leak out. The reason is, is because the left one, I actually applied the sealant from the backside, whereas the right one, I applied it from the front. Both of them are sealed. Both of them are completely sealed. The difference though, is the one on the right had a lot of squeeze out that looks awful, right? It looks like a, a freaking mess. The other one is also sealed. You can barely see there's kind of a hint of a, a ring of the sealant around it. On the other side, it's completely sealed as well. But uh, this is the difference of how I applied the uh, sealant to most of the rivets from the back side versus the front side, which I intentionally did uh, an entire uh, baffle on the front side just to show you the difference of what the final result is. It's no big deal either way. I'm going to take some uh, uh, mech or some brush cleaner or something just to go over that real lightly to get rid of that extra sealant that's on there. So either way, you come up with the same result. There's just a lot of waste when you do it from the front. So my, my suggestion, my advice, the way I found the best way to do it is just apply sealant to each of the holes from the rear side and a little bit will poke through. And then when you put the rivet in, it will kind of spread that out and you'll seal the rivet just fine. So anyways, just wanted to show that. And uh, now I'm gonna start working on ribs. Someone asked me uh, how many of these plunger style uh, pro seal tubes they would need to do a fuel tank. And I don't know yet. Um, I'm gonna guess between three and five. Um, it took one to do all the baffles, to do the uh, gas cap and to do the fuel drain cap. Uh, I could have done it with the other one, but I didn't because I, I wasn't sure if I was about to run out and I didn't want to like get it half done. But you're definitely going to use one for the baffle. I'm going to guess one for the ribs um, or maybe two for the ribs. I only have one right now, so I'm going to do as many ribs as I, I dare. Uh, I'm not, if, I, if I get real low, I'm just going to stop and I'll buy some more of these. Um, definitely, definitely one for the ceiling of the back. Like I would use a whole one of these for ceiling of the back and then maybe an extra one just in case. Um, I would say this is like sandpaper. Don't be afraid to use it, right? It's meant to be used up, right? So, so use it and then throw it away. Uh, somebody else asked me once you crack it open and you put the epoxy in there, um, can, can you just let it sit and then come back and use it? No, uh, again, it's, it's like a, it's like a two part epoxy or any kind of vulcanizing thing. Once you mix the two parts, the, the main stuff with the catalyst, it starts the curing process. And so uh, it's on, you're on a, you're on a clock at that point. Uh, so no, you, you, once you've mixed it, it's, you've got a very finite amount of, amount of time. And that amount of time, by the way, is determined by the number uh, on here, B half, B one, B two, et cetera. And I, and I think the, you can get one that says that it'll last as long as six hours before it really starts to set all the way up to like 30 minutes before it starts to set. So real quick, I just wanted to show you guys something. Uh, when I put this guy on here, so this is a fuel drain valve. It's got these threads in the middle. And the last thing we want to do is get goop on those threads because that stuff's going to be really hard to get off. So just using a simple piece of towel, I screw or I can kind of twist this in here like so. And that means I now can just leave that in there and apply this to the tank and the, uh, the threads are protected and I just pull this out when I'm done. Simple. I had someone ask me uh, if they inadvertently dimpled the wrong side of a piece of skin, are they boned? <laughs> that was their words, not mine. Um, my initial response was, no, you're fine. But then I really started to look into it. So first of all, I did that once on one of my parts. And honestly, if that is the worst mistake you make in this entire build, you're fine. Most of the skins are fairly inexpensive. I mean, some of the bigger skins are gonna be a little more. Uh, m most of that probably comes from the simple fact it takes you know, effort to ship it to you. But 
um, most of your skins are not that expensive. So if you dimple your skin entirely the wrong way and you go, oh crap, you can just buy another skin. Or you could re-dimple it. Dimple it the other way. So uh, you can see here what I did is I went through and I decided to try to dimple a skin and then flip it over, dimple it the other way and flip it over, dimple it the other way a number of times to see how many times you could do that before you started to have some kind of failure. And it wasn't very many. Um, dimpling one way was, you know, flipping it over and then the second dimple, dimpling the other way, I wouldn't do any more than that. Uh, because after that, you started to get oil canning real bad and then splitting. And then finally, it eventually just failed entirely and dimpling it at like the, a chunk shot out. So uh, I would say if you dimple your skin one way, you can flip it over and dimple it the other way once. And after that, I wouldn't do it. And, and other people might say, no, don't even do that. Uh, but I think once you're okay. That's my opinion. So take it with a grain of salt. Oh, yeah, you can see it's starting to split. Yeah, there it is. That's definitely a failure right there. Oh, <laughs> there you go. So while I continue working on it in the background, something I noticed while I was adding the Clicos back into the ribs and reassembling this sucker for the umpteenth time, you're gonna assemble and reassemble a number of times, especially on the tanks, because you have to make sure it all fits together. And then I also reassemble it one more time to put the blue painter's tape down, so I have my lines of exactly where I'm gonna put the goop, and then I scrub it and do all the other stuff. You'll see all that here uh, probably next time, not on this one. But anyways, I noticed on the end, so the T1003 left and right end rib, uh, the one that I used the two uh, ri uh, 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 pop rivets in this one and the bolts in the previous one to seal, I noticed that technically those rivets are outside of the tank. So you don't necessarily have to wet rivet those. Now, you can see in this picture right here, in the other tank, I actually did exactly that. I rivet, I mean, I, I gooped up the crap out of it. I put a lot of that stuff on the outside and on the inside. And this is what it looks like on the new tank before when I've just got the, the Clecos in. And it occurs to me that you don't have to do that on this particular one. You don't have to put all that goop on the outside because the liquid's on the other side of the metal. You just have to put a nice bead, I mean, a good healthy bead of um, Pro Seal goop on the inside and not have to worry about the outside at all. So I don't know if I'm gonna go that route or not. Uh, I may go ahead just for consistency to match but both tanks to go ahead and put the stuff on the outside too. But that could be, if, you know, if I was running out, that could be a place where I'm just wasting this stuff. But it begs the question, and it's one I've had before, can you use too much ProSeal? Um, I don't think so, honestly. Uh, unless someone down below, please comment. If yes, there's definitely a reason why you don't want to use too much, tell me. Uh, the only thing I can really think of is weight uh, versus, you know, or taking up space, for, which could be used by fuel. But I mean, you're not talking about a lot unless you fill the whole thing with ProSeal. Um, I, I, I don't think you can use too much. I really don't. Uh, leaking fuel tanks, bad, right? So making sure to use a lot of the dreaded goop in there to keep that from happening seems like a win all the way around. Uh, so no, I, I don't think you can use too much. Also previously, or maybe right now, I'm not sure where this is in the, in the video behind me, uh, I used one of those little film canister uh, versions of the Pro Seal for applying both the fuel cap uh, part and the fuel dump uh, plug on the other side of the tank, and it was just enough to do those two parts. So, and the other thing is, is the 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 B one slash half it cures quickly. I mean, uh, after I think it was like an hour, it was already getting really clumpy inside the fuel canister or the, 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 the little, the little cap, uh, that I, the, the, like the, uh, what I call it, a film canister of, uh, sized, uh, mixing area. 
it, it, you, it, it was clumping up real bad. So it got to the point where I couldn't actually put it on the top of the rivets. Once I had actually set the rivets, I usually go back and put more on top. I'm gonna have to come back and revisit that once I get the other stuff mixed for when I do the rest of the rivets and make sure that those are good and sealed. So uh, the, the, I get that touch-up kit is just that. It's a touch-up kit. It's good for really quick jobs, uh, small jobs. I mean, it's pri that's what it's priced for and, and size-wise, that's what it's obviously meant for. So don't try to do a big job with it just because uh, you don't have the time and there's just not a lot there. Uh, it's still pretty easy to work with though, right? I mean, it's the same thing uh, as using the quart size cans, but it just comes in the exact amount you need uh, for doing just a really small, uh, small gig. So anyways, uh, that's where I'm gonna end this one, guys. I really appreciate everything. Thank you very much. I'm gonna try to make these happen a lot more quickly. I wanna try to produce one of these videos a week, if possible. Incredibly difficult. Uh, I'm gonna try. Uh, everyone, I've had a lot of people reach out and, and uh, sort of chastise me, uh, chide me about not using gloves. I know, I know, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really bad about gloves. I actually hate my hands, apparently. You know, what can you say? Because I don't use gloves when I'm handling the aluminum and I don't use gloves when I'm handling the Pro Seal all that much, and I really should. You should too, uh, but you know, I don't. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, if you like what I'm doing on this channel, uh, hit that like button down there. Hit the hit the bell button too to subscribe and stay current on what I'm doing. And if you really like, if you hit the subscribe button down there, you'll get notifications every time I do something. Uh, and then if you really, really like what I'm doing, you can go over to my Patreon page and actually sign up. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can help support this project. Basically think of it as you're buying me a cup of coffee. There's a helicopter coming in because of course there is, because I'm, you know, trying to talk <laughs> and if you think or if you really think that you want to do this if you if you have this dream of building your own aircraft you can if I can do it you can do it if you use my builder number when you sign up or when you buy a van's kit they send me a hundred bucks it's no money out of your pocket it's just another way you can say thank you anyways guys thank you so very much have a good one stay tuned I plan to have a lot more coming real fast <laughs>